stops, then I will share my screen and start. So, hey guys, I'm Sevolet, a data engineer from SoftServe. Uh, I've been working as a freelancer previously and have pretty big experience in web scrapping. I have made almost 200 uh, web scrapping programs and according to my experience, gathered all the statistics typical goals and challenges into a single uh, presentation. It's an advantage over a traditional tutorial from YouTube, for example. Uh, this presentation is brief, but has maximum useful information. And uh, we will start with high level definitions because you may not be familiar with this at all. Then we will dive into details a bit. So going through the presentation, we will become familiar with many things and uh, techniques and use cases. Also, we will review the most famous tools and will become familiar with Scrappy. At the final stage, we will make a web scrapping program. So it, if it sounds interesting to you, let's get started. Let me just share my screen. Do you see my screen? Yes. Okay. So quick agenda again. The four essential chapters is uh, definition, usage, main frameworks, detailed look for scrappy and practice part. Uh, let's start from the definition of scrapping itself and of web scrapping. From Wikipedia, uh, web scrapping or web harvesting or web data extraction is a data scrapping used for extraction data from websites. And data scrapping overall is a technique where computer program extracts data from human readable output coming from another program. Also, uh, alternative definition from Zeit. Zeit is a developer of Scrappy framework we'll review. So web scrapping is a process of collecting structured web data in an automated fashion. In simple words, web scrapping is a technique of using tools for, for gathering information from the internet. Okay, good. Uh, let's review the typical goals of web scrapping. Um, five uh, chapters, but use cases are actually much more in there. So first and most obvious is the price bank or stock monitoring. When you need to have a fresh data from stock, for example, every day or even every minute, you need a solution that will obtain the data from the internet. Also, it could be related to content monitoring. Is it fresh content somewhere, for example? And also it can be applied to marketing research project. Uh, uh, you can analyze some products, their appearance in the internet and feedbacks and so things like that. Also, if you have a web store that make sales and uh, you need, you always will have a competitor and you need to analyze their sites as well and compare the prices, for example, of or availability of products. So you can offer something exclusive with such information. And the next goal is uh, specific data sets, especially for machine learning and artificial intelligence, because you know that this area of expertise is very dependent on data and uh, of specific data. So it's useful. It's useful in these areas as well. Uh, so, let me let me just move this okay and general rules how should you behave while they scrapping first of all you have respect the site because you're interacting with web 
So don't overload this with tons of requests. You should simulate human behavior as it possible. For example, make some pauses, make uh, less threats. Uh, to avoid get blocked. Once you uh, got blocked, you have to deal with blocking, make some uh, corrections to your behavior to prevent uh, repeating blocking in the future. Also, you should respect the data. You have to scrape public data only. It's obvious. And uh, no private and copyrighted data because if you scraped some data that marked as copyrighted, you cannot use this in your projects. Uh, it's very representative if you have some sites that gathers information from other sites, so you should care about these remarks from the sources to avoid the problems in the future. Also, you need to choose correct strategy. Correct strategy is actually the implementation of this above. Uh, so how many concurrent requests should you make? For example, are, are there risks to get banned? And uh, if yes, uh, which page should be processed first, which the next? Also, the leveraging of data should be considered at the first stage. Also, the overall strategy should be aligned with the business. And the last chapter is correct tools. You should use correct tools depending on the project, its complexity and infrastructure. You should not overuse some resources and costs because it's a client's money in most cases. So you have to analyze the situation and act. The next point is very important, is challenges. If you do data scrapping or planning to do data scrapping, and if you are in data area overall and interact with the web, you will face these challenges for sure. I have split them into three big groups and uh, they are sorted for, by complexity from top to bottom, like that. And each of the chapter is also sorted by complexity like this. Uh, yeah. So first chapter is complex site structure. Obviously, the sites are not pretty simple in general. And the web page may change from time to time. And when you when your spy, uh, your program was working previously, it's not guaranteed that it will work in the future because the site may change its design, and you have to change your program as well. The next thing is no general rules for a product page, for example. I will review in context of products and web shops because. Our practical parts will be dedicated to web shop. So no general rules for products. For example, the page may be very different for single product and for product that has a color or size variation, for example. And you should consider this in your scrapping program. The next thing is elements are hard to position in. You most probably are familiar with HTML and you know that HTML is semi-structured information. It has some structure, but the element should be positioned before extracting the information. And usually it's assigned with some specific classes and you oriented by class name, for example, or some overall structure like this um, second second tag for from the beginning of the table. But anyway, some inter enterprise level uh, web stores and uh, some world level sites uses uh, this uh, technique that you 
struggle with positioning script to extract the data. For example, every class are just random sequence of uh, letters and numbers, and it changes every time you load the page. So it's actually a problem. And most probably there is no solution to use some XPath uh, query or CSS query, and you should use regular expressions. The next uh, type of challenge is uh, dynamic content. Of course, the uh, page pages are not static in general, especially in modern internet and all the web stores are modern and they use some ajax request or infinite scroll techniques when the url is not changing but the context content is changing dynamically depending on your actions for example you click something and content appears you scroll and content appears and so on um, you have to use some tools to detect this request and recreate them in your program the next more harder case uh, when you use the same actions but no obvious request has been made it uh, might it might be a hidden api call so the page makes this call once at the page loading then it makes uh, some special objects then interact with the memory so it reads some big structure into the memory then interact with it that's why you cannot see any additional requests but this uh, discovering hidden api is very helpful while scrapping and because if you discover this you will receive big amounts of uh, structured data very quickly and without extra data is html text for example and the most complex from dynamic content in my opinion is web sockets web sockets are used when you need to i don't know some suggestions for example when you type text and receive list of suggestions and imagine that you have to scrape these suggestions from this list. The complexity of WebSockets are that uh, they use binary format of data and you have to uh, know this inter interpretation and emulate this. And the third and the most complex challenge is anti-scraping. Uh, many sites doesn't like when you scrape them because it's a big load to the infrastructure and they requires login and you cannot access the data without login so you must login you must emulate this request and login the second is a captcha and uh, captcha usually comes with together with login and you have to use some third-party services to resolve the capture with api call and the third and uh, as in my opinion ultimate uh, challenge overall is cloudflare cloudflare is uh, technically technic just a term actually cloudflare is a company that specializes in reverse proxy, anti-DDoS, and so on. Many people say that Cloudflare will, will be next cloud giant after Amazon and Google and Microsoft. And they have very advanced anti-scrapping techniques. For example, they assign hidden user ID, they analyze your behavior. And if they can detect, let's say, over human performance, they will block you gently or they will send you a captcha. So this way of blocking is unpredictable. Unpredictable. Also, uh, technically, the response is OK. And the status code is OK. So your proxy pool cannot detect this, is there the problem or not, because the status is OK. But the content says that you are gently blocked and you have to interact something to resume. So. In this case of 
Cloudflare inter uh, interruption, each each uh, side should be considered individually. Next, uh, next is what should you know to get started? Just pay attention to these levels required is uh, marked with ABC letter and desired level for each of the point. First, first of all, and the most important, you should know web technologies. What is request? What is the response? Which type of requests? Which types of responses? And uh, which are codes? Uh, what? is the code types what is the cookies what is sessions user agent and so on how do does web server work and things like that you should know it very well the second is browser dev tools because you will because you will interact a lot with this for the most uh, popular browser like chrome or firefox you should know this at least an intermediate level and expert is uh, will be great the next is of course python and or python object oriented programming you should know how to make class how to make child class how to implement a method and of course you should know uh, basic python stuff like loops conditions and some processing especially with strings the next point is HTML, CSS, and JS. You should be familiar with HTML tags, CSS selectors, and how J JS scripts are working. Because um, sometimes you have to emulate them. And the fifth point is regular expressions. Since our data is semi-structured and it's not in tabular format, um, Actually, let me quickly remind you what is semi-structured data. Semi-structured data is the data that doesn't follow uh, follow tabular guidelines and doesn't have schema like a database. Moreover, it may have nested objects, especially for JSON uh, and nested tables as, as HTML has. Obviously, it's not completely structured, but uh, it cannot be used directly for analysis for further uh, processing. And so, since this data is not in normal form, some cell might have two values, for example. It's quite unpredictable and unexpected, so regular expressions will help you there. Moving next. Um, the next point is what should you pay attention while you choosing scrapping tools five categories uh, each of them is important and first is workflow it should be user friendly should have easy start easy development and easy scaling in case of really big projects enterprise level the next is maintenance is the tool should be well documented have low have low price or no price be free preferably um, should have good support and community and regular updates data point is everything is simple more data formats is better more protocols is better the next and the very important point is integrations because uh, the scrapping tool may be not a note despite its quality and powerful, but it may be not a note. So you have to use third party frameworks, additional databases, data quality tools, and make some plugins or import existing plugins. And the last but not the least is the features. Uh, as I mentioned previously, it should. Uh, support sessions cookies user agent uh, to emulate user and interact with site like a user also it uh, should support redirects retries and filter duplicate urls to uh, prevent uh, target site overloading uh, also it will be great to have something for dynamic content 
because usually these tools uh, just send uh, just send uh, basic requests. Then advanced features is are welcome as well. For example, WebSocket scrapping, maybe even Onion sites and things like that. Uh, moving next, let's review the most popular tools. I have split them to two big groups, no code and frameworks. No code tools are usually online solutions or desktop apps that does, uh, don't require from a user any coding skills. And the solution could be made uh, visually with, within the mouse only. The most popular are Octopars, Import.io and ParseHub. I'm, I've been working with Octopars and Import.io and may say that they are quite similar, but have some differences. In case of Octopars, you have to install the desktop application uh, while the Import.io is completely online. Uh, Import.io is a little bit more expensive but and uh, octopars have has additional features like uh, variables loops and so on so it has something like uh, beginning level programming uh, another side import.io has very very strong proxy pool so you will not get banned probably and the next we will review the frameworks frameworks is are represented with the scrappy beautiful soup and pupiter uh, sorry uh, yeah. yeah for those no code solutions uh, as we are speaking right now uh, so you mentioned about this uh, problem with um, blocking uh, like too much um, uh, too much information that is actually sent so too much requests are actually sent so uh, do those tools implement also some sort beside this uh, proxies as you mentioned um, uh, some other uh, tooling that will prevent from blocking the uh, the traffic uh, once we are doing the the scrapping of the of the pages of course uh, this solution is some is online it's because they care about this by themselves Actually, if they detect uh, some blockings or some incorrect response code, they care by themselves and don't uh, don't count this request as successful and uh, do some retries until the request is success successful. So and it's completely mm -hmm. in their responsibility. And could, could do you uh, do you recall which of those are a uh, paid solution and which are the uh, because I don't uh, I didn't uh, uh, hear or uh, I, I don't know maybe I missed this one which which are uh, which of those are paid solutions? Actually, all online tools are obviously paid because there are companies behind that and they have uh, so, uh, strong infrastructure. So all code solutions are paid and the these frameworks are free. Okay, thanks. Okay, thanks. So let's review these three frameworks, most popular frameworks. First is uh, Scrappy. Scrappy is a powerful framework for data scrapping. We will review later in our presentation. The second is Beautiful Soup, also designed for Python and in Python. We will also review them together since we are Python community. And Pupiter is a third framework made in JS. I'm not familiar with this, but I know the framework is pretty popular. So let's review Scrappy and Beautiful Soup together with the details. First is the structure since the Scrappy is the framework. It operates with project projects. You cannot just make a small script and run. You have to make the project first with infrastructure, then make a Scrappy, I would say, unit and launch this unit. Actually, it named it Spider. You, you should make a Spider and run this inside the project. 
Well, the beautiful soup is just a library and the basic structure is the scripts. The second and very important feature and also quite complex to implement is the speed. The scrappy, I maybe it's too confident, but I will say that scrappy has infinite speed because they are built in asynchronous framework twisted and basic on asynchronous request. Asynchronous request is very good when you have a lot of input output operations and uh, will overperform multiprocessing uh, that could be achieved uh, in beautiful soup. So in beautiful soup, the speed could be achieved only by multiprocessing, but asynchronous request is better there because you can easily make 1000, for example, or 2000 synchronous requests that will complete it in seconds. And uh, it's much harder and much resource consuming to make so many processes. Uh, the next is very important feature, integration and scalability. Scrappy has good integrations. It has uh, built-in integrations with pipelines, middlewares, framework, and libraries. Pipelines is um, actually it's basic. It covers basic definition on pipelines and it uh, use of um, it used for additional data processing, while middlewares are used for additional request processing. That is the difference between them. And it can be integrated with other frameworks, with uh, new special objects can be used in the framework. And of course, you can import some third party modules and use them. In the beautiful soup, you can, of course, import modules. The next part is community and support, it's also very important. Uh, so the Scrappy has official, official developer site, it former Scrapping Hub, maybe you heard something about this. They renamed to Zite and they are official developer. They, uh, the company is cloud provider and uh, specialized in proxy services. Also the Scrappy has of course GitHub, official Reddit, Stack Overflow, uh, official Discord, Twitter, ERC, and Telegram channels. While the beautiful soup has developers community and default structures as GitHub and Stack Overflow. In terms of complexity, it's easy to see when you looking at documentation pages. Scrappy has 300 pages more than beautiful soup. It means that Scrappy is more complex and has uh, more features. The next is Stack Overflow tags. It's pretty interesting situation. Scrappy has less tags. No, no idea why. Maybe Scrappy is less problem problematic, something like this. And the uh, GitHub repositories say about popularity. Scrappy is more popular and obviously has um, stronger support. Okay. Next, we are moving closer to our practice. Let's review the Scrappy essential commands. First of all, you have to install the Scrappy with the Python and it's very easy. Just type pip install Scrappy. Then after Scrappy is installed, you have to create a new project. It's also very easy. Scrappy start project and you specify project name. Project dir is not required. It will make this project in current directory. After project is started, you have to generate the spider. As I said previously, spider is a minimum unit of Scrappy. It's a 
scrapping program that performs data extraction and you will launch spider so you have to create spider with the command scrappy gen spider you have to specify spider name and you it's also mandatory parameters as domain because uh, the spider will work inside specific domain and when everything is ready you start your project with a common scrappy crawl spider name so as you see despite its complexity the scrappy is pretty simple and pretty user friendly even at the beginning level only four commands when first two are used once then you have to use only actually scrapping crawl scrappy crawl next let's review a uh, typical project structure you see that let me we have a root folder then project folder uh, then project folder again it might uh, because you can create several projects inside the, this project then uh, you have a folder spiders there are no spiders yet and you have uh, your specialized modules for items uh, this model will set up behavior of your data structure you obtain from the website middlewares are used for data uh, for additional request processing if you require and the pipelines are used for additional data processing if you require this settings is self-descriptive model and it stores the project setting such as user agent for example uh, some speed setup concurrent request items some domains uh, integration with something third party api keys and so on also you see the config file config file used for debugging uh, and low level and project name and uh, project uh, what is the settings for each of the project okay uh, we are we will be scraping data from a online web store a retail store so let's review a typical schema how to scrape the data from online store it's an algorithm that covers every aspect of this first of all you have to clarify is login required or not because there are many of the cases first first case i i said previously that you cannot enter the site at all the second case is that you can enter the site but there are no prices without login and the third case is that there are every information in there but if you logged in the price will be uh, cheaper than uh, when you are not logging in this is exactly our case i will show you then after we clarified login we should uh, detect where is where are the categories of the product of the products and we need to obtain all the urls for each category once we obtain the, all the urls we have to scrape each category and what does it mean we have to retrieve all the urls for each product and we have to rotate pages somehow for the category page rotating could, could be simple they uh, it could be just urls for the next pages and it may be quite complex as i mentioned infinite scrolling in our case it will be simple then after we retrieved all the product links we have to finally scrape data from the product 
we should specify which data do we need. We obviously we need a URL, uh, name of the product, uh, then uh, image maybe, maybe uh, brand, uh, some SKU or UPC or whatever. Obviously we have to scrape a price and maybe availability. Uh, okay, if everything is clear here, we can move to our practice part. Okay. Uh, All right. May, maybe one, one more one question related to the um, uh, to the pagination itself. Uh, so, how this particular thing is uh, somehow discovered? I mean, because uh, I assume that we do not have access to the API of uh, of this uh, uh, retail store that we are talking about. So, how Scrappy um, like generates or f finds out uh, how we should use the uh, the debug pagination uh, itself once we are talking about. Uh, uh, yeah, once we are talking about many, many items that will be loaded uh, using pagination itself. Actually, there are several, uh, several approaches in there. I will show you the most basic one and the more advanced will be your homework, okay? Okay. <laughs> so the the simple, simple solution is that uh, all the pages have uh, some unique ID with the URLs and you just need to identify this ID and extract URLs then make a new calls with this behavior actually if you pay attention you see that we scrap next pages and return to this procedure but Again, this is scrape the mm -hmm. products and scrape new pages and this is a cyclic process right I will show you in the practice part Okay, but uh, one more thing. So, uh, is there, is there any way that uh, Scrappy can do it automatically, or we need to prepare some sort of, uh, or we we need to do some sort of reverse engineering and prepare such uh, uh, operation to extract this data by, by ourselves? We just define rules, and that's it. Okay. Of course, for defining rules, we have to investigate the page. Of course, that's why you that why we need to know the tools very well okay awesome thanks okay so let's start practicing uh, first of all let's review this guy uh, we see our site is omega manufacturing it's a typical online store we see the categories here. Each category have products and next pages, obviously. So uh, what do we see in there? We see name, price, availability, part number, uh, brand, not sure, maybe somewhere in the page source, things like that. But if you check, this one we see that the only difference we are not logged here and we are logged here right and the price is 25 dollars cheaper so that's why we have to log in let's review the login process with the details i will show you sorry i will show you the screenshots because of the sensitive information. So I have detected that this request is responsive for login process. We use this URL and this request type. And we transfer the information into this payload. Okay. And let's review the payload with details. The payload is nothing else as our form data. In terms of Python, it's actually a dictionary with these keys and these values. So if we specify this dictionary, 
and pass with this particular URL and with this type of request, we will be logged in. It's nothing complex, actually. Uh, let's make a new project in PyCharm. We will use PyCharm. Let's make a new project, Python project one. By uh, make virtual environment, create new window. Okay, we don't need this. Okay, in the terminal, we have to install Scrappy first. So, hmm. pip install. Scrappy. Pip install Scrappy. Okay. Then Scrappy start project. Uh, let's name it web. Sorry. Scrappy start project web shops. Okay. Let's check. Here is our project. And we see the tips from the Scrappy. You can start your first spider with CD Web Shop, Scrappy against spider, example, example. Let's follow this. CD Web Shops, then Scrappy, Gen Spider, Omega. Manu back during and domain omega manu back during dot com. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's check. We see our spider. What is important? The name is important because we will call it also all of the domains. Uh, all is also important because with this list we restrict our spider with its attempt to scrap entire internet <laughs> okay all right uh, let's specify our data first we decided to uh, as, as i said the data structure is described in items.py right uh, we decided to scrape specific data and let's define it here. Uh, let's rewrite a bit from scrappy.item import import item field item. So what will we extract? Name of course url name url uh, brand sku price or price equal to field what else? Um, rent a skill price. Okay, let's let's simplify with these five fields. Okay, okay. So let's return to our schema. First, we have to implement this login process. As we know. Login process is nothing else as simple request. So let's def 
uh, login. Uh, and uh, you saw that login is uh, form request because it has a form data. Let me just remind. You see this form data here. So we have to do form request. Okay. Return form request. Actually, we see it highlighted red, so we have to implement uh, import this uh, from scrappy HTTP import request form request okay form request requires url it requires form data uh, let's make some skeleton here and each request requires callback callback is uh, event listener or some method that processes event response. Let's specify callback. Uh, self check login response. Check login response. Okay. What do we have to gather in the form data? In the form data, we need to have catalog ID, email, password, and submitted. Catalog ID is zero, submitted is empty, and email and password are our credentials. Let's write catalog ID id equals zero email we will get this from environment i have prepared some variables on the login like this then password OS environment get um, password next is submitted empty HTTP dot com. Let's check what does they need. Login dot ASP. Okay. Login ASP order tracking equals to one. Okay. Uh, you have a typo in HTTP. Exactly. I was about to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thanks. HTTPS, by the way. And we forget to specify the method. It's post, method post. And let's import a cool feature that used for debugging from Crappy dot utils dot response import open in browser. We can open our response in browser and see what happens. Okay. Uh, let's review. Mm, actually, each each of this requests should be started with special. Uh, method start request you see it's highlighted so 
let's start this. We specify login URL. Let's check what is the login URL. Just in case. Callback self login. Okay. Let's review and let's make a breakpoints here. And we are ready to test now. Let's test. And how to set up the scrapping process at all? You should specify this module name, it's scrappy. Also, parameters are crawl as we discussed previously then spider name omega manufacturing we can also specify some additional outputs as logs minus minus log file equals logs log txt also uh, let's let's finish and uh, working directory should be project directory not a spiders directory like this and let's name it mega manufacturing okay okay all right so let's check so lot. sorry yeah. for the interruption we have just five minutes left Five minutes. Okay, let me speed up things and show you the completed example. Not a problem. Uh, we have completed example here. So this is our form request for login. Okay, we login. Then we start from our start pages. Uh, we scrape every category. So how to find category? We analyze. We analyze the uh, XPath, or we we just detect some patterns with the browser tools. We see that the pattern is drop down, then it's pretty structured with text UL, Li, and A href. If we type this XPath here. Hmm. Something like this. So class equals to drop down. So this is our URL for categories with this XPath. That's why you should know uh, browser dev tools very well because you're inspecting the page like this detect each of the patterns let's return so let's run the ready to go solution let's be sure that we are actually logged in open in browser our response we are logged in you see that this is a local file from our PyCharm, we are logged, okay. And that's great. We extract the categories here. 190 categories. We have, uh, we make some correct URLs with URL join. So this is the category link. Then we parse, then we follow the schema exactly follow our algorithm we extract products we extract products here and we extract next pages actually this uh, your question thomas how to extract next next pages so we see that next page has clear class paging links and we extract a shrift from here 
and we make new request for this URL with the callback of the same procedure for category. So we, we just repeat this procedure again. And finally, we get a single item. We extract information from here. Let's, let's run this. Let's check our output. Output is here. This is our output. You see that it's in structured format. We see description, image, manufacturer name, price, a price regular. This is the price if you was not logged in, and this is price for logged users, site SKU, stock, stock level, and URL. So uh, summarizing, we became familiar with scrapping overall with the scrapping techniques and have built a spider from real world with the scrappy framework any questions Mm -hmm. What about uh, the situation where the X path is uh, not an option from perspective of uh, fetching the contents? As I said previously, if the X path is not an option, you have to investigate the page and uh, analyze how it, uh, which behavior does it have. It may have some additional requests or in as alternative you may use uh, regular expressions okay that extraction and uh, from the perspective of analyzing the structure of the page itself uh, is there uh, are there any tools that uh, might do it like automatically i mean not even from the perspective of uh, like some sort of uh, logical uh, steps but at least to uh, dump uh the data so uh i might be able to see somehow structurized if you know what i mean i yeah i guess what do you mean as i said the scrapping may be completed in hundreds of ways if you for example if you discovered hidden api you can receive some json objects di directly without any additional performance but if you deal with pure html there is nothing else than inspecting the page and make xpass or css selectors okay thanks thanks i have a question um as i know some websites uh have um uh, just uh, not return the whole page just by one HTTP request. And you need to process some JSON code uh, to receive the rest of the page. For example, some Google sites works like this and other may also. Uh, can Scrappy uh, deal with this situation or you need to find something else? Um, yeah, as I said, uh, we can do uh, the scrapping in alternative way and if it's not if, do not receive html just receive some responses from api and if it's not possible we can integrate scrappy with some additional tools for example with selenium um, if there are any qa people you know what is the selenium so we can integrate selenium and run this uh, the request through the selenium 
and we will be emulating user very closely we can do scrolling here and everything every clicks and things like that and then scrapping results with the scrapping so uh, if you can resolve the problem directly you can look for the integrations and for additional tools the scrappy as i mentioned scrappy has a lot of Git, github stuff and a lot of integrations strong community and most probably your problem uh, are previously resolved so yeah so does scrappy have some sort of uh, out of the box integration with selenium because from what i understand and as far as i uh, uh, as far as i recall those are uh, pretty much close to each other uh, flame frameworks at least from the perspective of scrapping right yes right scrappy has um, additional let's say plugin scrappy selenium and you can integrate this through the middlewares you just make a driver in the middleware and you transfer this request all the requests to the selenium and receive the responses from the driver nice okay that two is ways this. actually two ways at least at least okay awesome that's nice thanks thanks hey i have several questions uh so uh, uh the first question is uh, how to deal with capture so uh, in case you need to manually put it so how to like a, uh, insert a breakdown or something to put capture actually and, uh, proceed with for the request yeah thanks for the question actually also there are many ways to deal with capture first is to use some additional plugins that resolve capture or you can yeah you can log in once because the capture usually comes with login you can log in once then uh, transfer cookies into the scrappy session for example and you even not need to use the browser because you will have uh, cookies for the logged user and it's possible in this way okay but but the question is uh, how to like uh, open the window uh with scrappy a browser window with scrappy and uh okay um, i mean how to handle exactly uh capture input uh, uh, with scrappy because uh from why uh from what i uh, saw uh scrappy is like a uh no browser solution or I'm yes yes sure. exactly but it easy could be converted to browser solution as i said you can integrate this with selenium and do only login for example mm -hmm. and scrappy will continue ah. mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or as i said you you may log login manually then mm -hmm. store cookies then okay. it's it's easy to transfer these cookies into even no browser solution but mm -hmm. you you mm -hmm. okay. The main difficulties okay. is to receive the correct cookies for the session for the login oh, session. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, so uh, the next question is uh, how to uh, uh, pretend uh, your uh, like um, how to mask your script with uh, a real user. I mean, uh, you need to set uh, a user agent or something. Yes, yes. Scrappy has a user agent by default. If it's not it not enough, you can uh, tweak your speed and uh, multitasking if uh, even it's not enough you can uh, for example the side detects your javascript is disabled you can enable it using uh, integrations uh, the simplest and the most famous is splash you can use scrappy splash to emulate javascript and render javascript pages then scrappy then uh, transfer into scrappy uh, so it's also pretending to be user and the ultimate pretending <laughs> to be user is selenium and mm -hmm. its variations for example i know the good, pretty good variation undetected chrome driver it's a patched chrome driver mm -hmm. and absolutely without any mark of automated browser mm -hmm. 
Uh, so, and ba based on your background, what's the most common ways uh, from the uh, site uh, to detect that uh, your you is uh, like a robot, uh, or is that uh, some kind of scrapping on this side? Uh, the site algorithms are pretty straightforward. Um, the the if if site wants to get protected from scrapping or some automated things, the uh, the easiest way is to put captcha while logging for everyone, literally. The second thing is that uh, they look for uh, JavaScript. And uh, as I said, in the, nowadays it became it become to harder scrapping because they integrated with Cloudflare, and it's mm -hmm. pretty hard to deal with Cloudflare. You can mm -hmm. emulate user very, very, very closely, and you can make maximum efforts to emulate. But anyway, th this protected sites are. Um, smaller part of mm -hmm. the retail stores and yes yeah. yes because it it need to like pay for cloudflare for this protection exactly exactly and uh, and about the user agent uh, does uh, and the user agent you, uh, you like use for uh, detecting that uh, some scripts tries to scrap the site site or user agent uh, isn't critical in this case? I'm not sure user agent is critical because uh, when I have problems with sites, uh, as a consequence of abusing, for example, I was able to open the site even from Postman with user agent mm -hmm. of Postman mm -hmm. of, from every script, it's not mm -hmm. a problem. And uh, if site wants to block you, the user agent is the last thing the site mm -hmm, will mm -hmm. look at. Oh, okay. That's okay. my opinion. And uh, you mentioned you uh, have a huge experience in scrapping. Uh, and uh, based on your experience, uh, how to deal with uh, like a, a sections on uh, some site that available only on mobile phone, but uh, you will need to scrap it from the PC. For example, uh, AliExpress has some categories that are available only on uh, mobile phones and in mobile app, and you can't find these uh, like sections uh, in a real site on PC. To be honest, I never deal with uh, mobile things, but mm -hmm. I, I think it's possible to start with the simplest solution, just uh, type uh, URL for mobile client mm -hmm. and uh, or request mobile content if it's possible, so it's not, it not be a problem. But actually, I have no practical experience with that. Mm -hmm. I just said I have, uh, yeah, I have around 200 scrappers for, for web stores for mm -hmm. desktop, <laughs> for desktop format. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's uh, actually, it's very big area of expertise and uh, many cases that uh, anyone has faced yet. But uh, I, I'm pretty sure it's it's possible at least to type mobile URLs. Just uh, we can start with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So, and uh, you mentioned about the uh, hidden API, uh, and uh, uh, the question is how difficult to find uh, to detect it to detect this hidden API. Hidden API usually has a complex URL and uh, also encrypted response. Mm. Uh, so you have to process each request of uh, the page, especially at the beginning of the loading the page and uh, analyze each of the requests mm -hmm. and uh, uh, as well as it shows a response. Then you have to realize which parameters do you need to make this hidden API request successfully. 
then make it. It's it's just quite difficult to understand. Does does the site make this false or not? Because um, it might be some I don't know AJAX request or something like this. But if uh, as I said, if you do some actions but no obvious obvious requests has been made or no obvious actions from the site uh, from the site you should think about yeah about hidden api mm -hmm. okay okay thanks thanks so and uh, uh the question uh, about no code solutions uh so can all these no code solutions uh, can be used together uh you mentioned about uh scrappy beautiful soup uh and something sure can, can... they can they can mm -hmm. sure they and, can and... because no uh, each of the no code solution has uh, own api and you can make calls from the from the for example python script passing you token and make a call receive results not a problem actually i i've been using this with import.io i mm -hmm. launched uh, import.io tasks from the python script and it worked well yeah and uh, the same is suitable uh, for a uh, code solution right right uh, and uh, in what cases you usually uh, use a uh, code solution together could you please I mean, rephrase? As, um, uh, so you, you, uh, for example, you have like a, a two code solution, a Scrappy and Beautiful Soup, for mm -hmm. example. And in, in what in what cases uh, you usually use them together? Uh, or I guess well, they can be used together. Of course, they can be used together if you want to have a strong features from both, for example. And if you are a strong, uh, beautiful soup user, but you mm -hmm. need to integrations from Scrappy, for example, of its speed, uh, things like that. So, yeah, it, it's based possible. on your best, best, uh, yes, but based on your on your experience, how often you uh, used uh, it together? Or uh, just scrappy uh, will be enough for routine tasks or? You just saw in practice example that scrappy is enough, but it's possible to use. Uh, personally, I have never used them mm -hmm. together. Okay. Be uh, in terms that it's easier to install, you just have to install scrappy and that's it and go ahead. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, but, so, but I, I don't reject beautiful soup. Beautiful soup is very good, very uh, is great tool for mm -hmm. simple cases. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, thank you. Useful. Thank, thanks, thanks. And uh, uh, I saw that you uh, used uh, HTTP protocol uh, during initialization of the project, Scrappy project. And uh, the question is, uh, does it handle HTTP to HTTPS yes, uh, yes. redirect? Yes. So uh, it uh, handles it automatically, right? Right. I mean, if you uh, like specify uh, HTTP protocol for the login URL, yeah. uh, it will be automatically redirected to HTTPS if the site uh, supports it, right? Or right. Let it, me show you. Let or... me show you the logs. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's easy to see. If you search for C three O two, mm -hmm. it my previous attempt, so don't mind. Actually, um, we'll get. Mm. You see that redirecting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Scrappy manage this redirects mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. by default. Uh, from so, any protocol to any other protocol oh. and so on so it's uh, like uh, on scrappy side right 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 uh you uh, didn't uh, you you don't think about the direction on this uh, like a uh, site itself 
uh, I mean that if the site for some reasons cannot redirect uh, HTTP to HTTPS and uh, you will specify HTTP in this project so, and you will uh, will be uh, like uh, logged in with uh, with HTTP protocol. So uh, uh, the question was about the redirection on uh, the Scrappy side. So as I, as I understand, the Scrappy manages it itself. Yes, yes. You should not care about redirecting by default because Scrappy mm -hmm. has mm -hmm. implemented this. And mm -hmm. if you want, for example, to intervent this process with your specific procedures or methods, for example, you don't want to get redirected and uh, you you want to, I don't know, repeat the request to the page before redirect, you can uh, specify this into the scrappy there are okay the tools uh, built-in tools as well for this case yeah. thank you and uh, uh about the uh, login info how it uses uh with the uh, next request so uh where uh, how scrappy uh like uh, um, find out uh what is the uh, where is the uh, logging data stored at how the Scrappy uses this data for the next, next request? As I said, Scrappy um, supports sessions and cookies Good. and redirects and this, this stuff mm -hmm. to be maximally similar with user. And this one, is what happened when you press the login button with field credentials mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it's uh, shown in let's say python form okay mm -hmm. non-graphical non form and the scrappy makes this request with th this url this method and pass this form data that's why we specified this as form request instead mm -hmm. of just request mm -hmm. because we pass this form data it looks like we press the button. And as we just discussed, Scrappy supports redirects. And when it say it sends this, it receives it receives uh, redirect with mm -hmm. new cookies and uh, new session. And it takes it and uh, it holds entire session. And actually, what we doing this is done inside entire session because scrappy holds the session by by the box uh, could you please see difference from the justice oh table. so the next methods for example start scrapping uses a response response of login uh, request yes yes because the star scrapping is callback, it's a callback mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, the scrappy is automatically detects uh, all the logins information. I mean the session cookie and uh, etc. Yes, uh, yes, yes, exactly, exactly. It holds the sessions and so yeah, it's managed. You don't need to think about the store in this session and these cookies. Uh, uh, the scrappy do it automatically uh, for you. Yes, you don't. You don't mm -hmm. care. Mm -hmm. You have not care. And if you like, you can access to these cookies, for example, okay. if you want to save them, or yeah, or you can okay. assign your own cookies if you have so yeah well, it's very tweakable by default okay okay, okay. Uh, thank you thank you thank you a lot uh great presentation uh, thank you for sharing uh your thank you Ivan, for, for your us. questions so have a good day thank you for the presentation again